And welcome here with Brian Cox, the CEO of SurgePay is joining us once again to discuss a few exciting things the company's working on. Brian, always a pleasure to have you. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Glad to be back. Always a pleasure to have you, Brian. So let's go ahead and get things kicked off. Take us through what SurgePay is and what some of your primary revenue drivers are for anybody that hasn't talked with the company or seen any content before when we've talked with you in other interviews. Sure. Yeah, I always like having a chance to give a mile high perspective of what we're building here at SurgePay. I'll tell you what, I'll give a, a, a quick overview of the company and the fundamentals of our uh, the business stock side. Uh, SurgePay, our team's been providing underbanked services, uh, that being telecom, financial services to folks who don't have checking accounts, uh, credit cards, that addressable market is about 100 million folks in the United States. We've been doing this for about 20 years. We brought it public five years ago, and we've man, I tell you what, we've hit the road and, and doing fantastic. We, um, as a company, we've got two main revenue drivers. Uh, we go into the neighborhoods where these customers live, these underbanked communities. We have a FinTech software platform built on blockchain that allows the clerk to do transaction for this customer base, whether it be financial services that they may need, reloading debit cards, uh, gift cards, telecom services, paying their prepaid wireless payments or activating prepaid wireless phones. Uh, and on that, the other revenue driver is we also own products that we sell directly. So we don't just do transactions FinTech style, we actually are a carrier. One of them's right here, Local Rabbit. That's our one of our paid prepaid wireless companies. And then we own two companies that provide um, subsidized mobile broadband. So for those uh, who need internet access out there and are unable to pay for it, the government will kick in and help them to ensure that we've got a society who's connected. And um, so that's that's been really our big revenue drivers for the year. Great start, man. And always coming in exciting, as always, right? You recently closed a $25 million installment credit facility in past interviews. You've talked about the need to throttle sales until you have additional non-dilutive financing to acquire a larger supply of tablets and ramp up the sales. Are you unthrottled? Are we at that point now? Man, we're there. And everything that I just told you and talked about was all done under throttle and under cash flow growth model. Uh, you know, we were running out of devices for our uh, prepaid wireless about three weeks into every month. We were throttling sales based on a very disciplined budget. And this, um, this facility that we closed is very unique because it incentivizes us to grow faster. So to give you an example, let's say we go out and buy $5 million worth of devices, uh, that'd be smartphones or tablets. And what they, the, the way this works is we don't pay for that right now. You basically take that number and divide it by nine and we pay installments over nine months. So that allows us to cash flow growth through that. It's not debt. It's an installment payment. It's a payable. So, you know, it allows us to get debt free next year uh, and it opens it up where now we're incentivized to increase our borrowing base through the revenue that we get by placing those devices. So as our customers grow, our revenue grows, our borrowing base grows, we're able to get more money. I mean, so it's a really cool uh, rinse and repeat stair-stepping process. And we got 15 million right out of the gate, 10 million more already pre-approved. And you know, the, the facility goes up to 100 million under its current structure. Fantastic. Okay, now you've previously mentioned the acquisition of a software CRM platform called Shockwave. It's a key to growing your prepaid wireless and mobile broadband base. Can you explain a little bit more about this? Give us some details here. Yes, yeah, Shockwave is a really cool CRM. It's interconnected with the FCC clearinghouse for folks that are on government assistance. It's how they get approved. And we're also interconnected with T-Mobile and AT&T. It's how we provide our service and our, do all of our customer service. And like I said, the overall CRM. Well, I didn't announce it over the summer when we acquired it because my goal wasn't just to acquire it. My goal was to use it to accomplish a goal. And that was to integrate Shockwave with Surge Pays so that we could be the first and as far as I know it, the only company able to do government subsidized enrollments, activations, setups in convenience stores. And why that's important is, as you know, and we've talked about, we already have thousands of convenience stores and bodegas and tiendas around the country that are transacting on our network. But the way that all of the ACP or the, the, the subsidized mobile broadband folks bring on customers right now is through pop-up tents outside uh, in the low income neighborhoods. Well, it's getting cold now and things are migrating south and it usually kind of slows down in the winter. Well, now that we're able to be inside these brick and mortar convenience stores and corner shops where our customer base shops five to six times a week, 
And we know that they shop there because we've done surveys and we've actually paid for surveys. And we know 70 to 80 percent of the people that shop at independently owned convenience stores use their EBT snap card to purchase goods at least once during the month there. So it's going to be a fantastic way for us to get far more enrollments than what we have now, but a great way for us to add stores. Because what a great pitch is that when you can go into a store owner, pull that door and say, hey, I see your sign out front where you, you guys take EBT and SNAP. Hey, you know those guys are entitled to free internet. Why don't I pay you to help set these guys up? We'll get them hooked up with a tablet or a smartphone, and then we'll cover their service every month, and we'll give you residuals and an upfront bonus. I mean, that, that's music to these guys' ears, so it's going to allow us to work hand-in-hand hand to grow our network of stores transacting. That way, now we can upsell our other products, but also really blow the doors off our ACP and uh, federal subsidized enrollments for mobile broadband. 100%. All right, Brian, let's wrap things up. Really exciting topic here to tie all of this together. Many investors and a lot of the investing public as a whole right now have concerns about some of the recent news in crypto, such as the FTX meltdown. Your platform is built on the blockchain. Does any of what's going on in the crypto markets impact surge pays? Why or why not even? No, it really doesn't. Um, as a matter of fact, it kind of proves out some of my theories. And, uh, you know, I'm an old school movie guy. And, I, you know, I love it when a plan comes together. You know, so I'm like, I feel like the old A-team guy sometimes. Um, just as we're able to start doing these activations at the store level, and just as we're able to start, you know, we hired a gentleman to run that division for us to really start growing those stores by leaps and bounds now that we've got, now that we're locked and loaded. My goal originally in 2017, when I first took over the company, was to use digital currency, not like F FXT, these exchanges where you're just trading back and forth and hoping that someone buys it from you later and that's the derived value. My goal was to use digital currency to introduce it as a real use case for the underbanked in the United States to give them a way to do transactions at the corner stores. But to get this functionality, you've got to first enable them to be able to use it at the corner store, which means you've got to get the adoption of the corner store first. So everything that you see us doing at Surge Pays is getting stores on our network, transacting on our network. We're ACHing them. We're in their checking accounts. We're a financial services profit partner of theirs. And it's all in an effort to ultimately build this network where one day folks could go in with a QR code who don't have a checking account and trust the fact that when they scan that up at the register, they can walk out with uh, you know goods or services from that store and the store owner knows he's getting paid. It's the functionality of digital currency as opposed to trading digital currency. So, you know, things are happening just like I thought. There were people involved with some of these exchanges out there and with people come uh, you know, the human error and greed. Uh, but, you know, we feel like every dollar that we make is providing an essential service uh, to people who need it. And I think as long as we stay focused on that and stay dialed in on our market and our message and stay disciplined, I think we're going to continue to see that same growth trajectory and have a phenomenal year next year. Amazing. Brian, every time you join us, you give us an exciting picture of the future. Always something happening in the surge pace world. Really excited to see what comes next year and to talk with you again soon. Thank you as always. Hey, I enjoyed it. Can't wait till next time.